You're listening to SITN Radio on the Select USA TV iBroadcasting Network. You're listening to SIBN Radio. Welcome to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is the author of the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, published by Worldcom, a social worker and activist. You can like this show's fan page at www.facebook.com slash The Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Feel free to post any comments, questions, or requests for his book on the fan page. Now let's go into the studio with your host, Mr. Keenan Lake, and co-host, Marcus Select. Well, welcome aboard. This is the Kenyon Lake Show on SIBN Radio, and we're live in the studio with Kenan Lake, and I'm Marcus Select, co-host. Kenan, how are you doing today? Coach, I am doing well. I'm doing well. I want to thank all of our listeners to, for tuning in to another episode of the Kenan Lake Show. We have a wonderful show lined up today, Coach, as we want to talk about who's raising your children. I think that's a very interesting topic, Coach, very interesting uh, title there. And uh, first of all, Coach, I want to start off by giving an example. Um, when we talk about who's raising your children, uh, I think, you know, we, we all know that parents have it really, really hard. They have a really hard, you know, time as far as working parents, you know, single parents. Being a parent in general, whether you have two parents in the home or a single parent, I think being a parent is a very, very demanding task, a very demanding job. But first of all, I want to take all my hats off to all my parents out there, primarily all my single moms, uh, single parents as well. But when we talk about who's raising your children, the example I want to give, Coach, is this. Young man, young woman gets home from school. After a long day of school, being away from your parents for, you know, seven, eight hours a day, you get home from school. The first thing that the, uh, when the child gets home, they get home, they take, their, they take their backpack off, they go to their room, they either get on a video game, play a video game for several hours. After the video game goes off or after they're done with the video game, they immediately turn the television on. After watching uh, hours of television, they may go get something to eat. We all know that uh, dinner is not traditional like it used to be where the family eats at the dining room table. Nowadays, we have the family who may have a... You know, one kid may eat in his room, another kid may eat in the living room. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the kid may get something to eat. After that, they're on the laptop playing uh, playing on the laptop all night on the computer and or their cell phone, which has uh, access to the Internet as well. So, Coach, um, it's almost like now when we talk about who's raising, raising your children, who's raising your child, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that I've seen uh, has been the media, the, the, the social media, the networks, all of those things that are not parents, mm -hmm. TV, those type of things. What do you like to say about that, Coach? Well, as you so eloquently put it, uh, we have a whole, I think two, maybe two and a half, maybe three generations of children raising themselves. And this is not good going forward regarding great citizenship, uh, what can we expect from kids who are not nurtured to excellence, who are not fathered? Uh, mothers have a double duty job of trying to be mother and father. And also they have to bring in the bacon, as they say, to ensure that the child is not living in poverty. And in many cases, children are living in poverty due to the lack of the mother being able to secure more education and more opportunities. Uh, but as you just so eloquently said, basically children are left to themselves. We know about those kids being at risk between three and six, three and seven, uh, because they have no guidance, no one is home. And so this is a very critical issue. And I think today uh, we want to at least encourage those single mothers, particularly since 65 plus percent of our homes are you know, filled with single mothers. We want to encourage them. You're exactly right, Coach. And actually, uh, you know, to, to kind of piggyback on a couple of things you said, first of all, you know, like you said, and actually um, it's actually 84% uh, of all of our single parents, of all of our single homes are women. So 
and every single uh, 13.7 million single homes in America, 84% are single moms. So, you know, first of all, I want to take a hat off to my single moms because you guys are, you know, you guys are doing a stand up job, but you know, we, we need to change that as well. And we'll talk about that a little later, but when we talk about parenting coach, we talk about being um, involved with your children and your child. One of the things I want to talk about real quick is this. We know how, we know how society works and you and I have talked about this on previous shows uh, you know, uh, on the Keenan Lake show, like for example, how the system is set up and folks, if you don't know, um, and if you're not aware, there is a system out there, there is a plan and the plan starts and it goes by where we talked about this in the past, for example, third grade reading test scores, EOG test scores, stuff like that. By the end of the year, if you have a child in the third grade and your child cannot read and those end of the, in those end of the year test scores, the child fails. Those are the number of jail cells that they build the following year. A lot of people say those are, that's a myth. Um, you know, a lot of people don't believe in that, but that's, that's what it is. Also, we talked about how Walmart, Walmart, the Walmart that we shop at all, every day, all day, is one of the biggest builders in the prison system. We talked about how the um, prison systems are being privatized and, and organizations and businesses are being able to franchise and get involved with this prison system which which is exactly that it's a business if a if an organization or a franchise gets involved in a prison they're going to run it they want to run it just as a business so with the media the media promotes nothing but sex to to young kids and we're going to talk about that a little later but so the whole thing is when it when it comes to television you know you can you can turn on the television to even your basic cable now and it's nothing but promotion it promotes nothing but sex on that the radio the television the internet so when you have these things, and, you know, it's nothing wrong. We talked about this pri- uh, previously too, Coach. There's nothing wrong for a mom to tell her six-year-old son or her six-year-old daughter, honey, you know, I need to take a break right now. Go in there and watch TV. Go in there and do something to occupy yourself. And, 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 and that's what we find ourselves doing as parents, you know, as uh, care providers. We find ourselves doing that a lot of the times. But one of the things I want to make a call to today is that you have to be very, very careful and know exactly what you're getting into and what your child is getting into primarily. And I think this this is the accountability, accountability factor. I mean, we have heard in our churches and, and particularly in some sectors of our communities to be responsible. Uh, but we have very few voices that call us to the carpet publicly, such as shows like this and other civic leaders that call us all to a greater accountability uh, factor regarding what are we doing as we build community. And I think what I've learned from what you're doing um, and what you are doing with the boys and, and also in with the state of, uh, with the city of Asheville and North Carolina there uh, with social services is that you are partnering with willing forces and unwilling forces uh, to bring about a better sense of community and community comes with both responsibility and accountability. And we, as being responsible from our father, having taught us how to be responsible, make ourselves accountable to our communities through the airwaves by raising these issues. Um, And as you always have raised this issue, reason why you wrote the book, my daddy taught me that this issue, we're raising it. So we're being accountable to the listeners. And this is a call to responsibility, a greater sense of responsibility since the threat threshold has been raised. Coach, I think you're exactly right. I think you hit the nail right on the head. Also, to uh, kind of piggyback on what you said once again, is, is the, the community. Now, you know, we talked about this prior, Coach, and, you know, we're, we're well aware, but the community structure has changed, you know, since even from the standpoint of, you know, my generation. You know, I'm not that old. I'm 36. I'm not quite that old. But even with the generation standpoint, you know, there there used to be a sense of, it takes a village, you know, where the community as a whole, you know, was involved. I never forget, you know, when, when I got in trouble, you know, primarily being at my grandmother's house, you know, and and we, and I think you talked about this prior, for example, my mom and my dad both worked, my mom and my dad both worked, uh, you know, full-time jobs. So they would, you know, drop me off over my grandmother's house. Now Mm -hmm. at the time, my grandmother, you know, there was like 16 grandkids over there at one time, but we all, it was a big family thing. I had my grandmother, my grandfather, up the street, there were several neighbors who knew my family, who knew my mother, who knew my father. You know, down the street, they knew. So, you know, it was almost like a community watched out for us. You got If you got in trouble in the neighborhood, 
when I grew up. Not only you, but you might get get it on the way home. But there's going to be a phone call, you know. And by the time you get home, if they don't walk you themselves to the to the house, you know, it's going to be some problems. That's right. And you know, and and that's how it was. You know, it was that community effort. You know, even back then too. Like one of the things that's kind of kind of gone away from too was you know the recreation centers. You know, you had that that hometown community where the person who worked at the rec gym or the, you know, the, the boys and girls club, they knew your folks, they knew your family. Oh, you, you know, you're some kid of Benny Lake. You're his son. Or you're some kid of Robin Lake. That's your mother. I know your family mm-hmm. and don't have me call your, your peoples. You know, so right. it, it's kind of gone from that sense because we don't have that, that close knit community. Now we don't have that same type of feel. Also the churches were, were more and so involved. Uh, as opposed to nowadays where, you know, you have primarily the younger generation who who are not raising their children in the churches. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, as parents, you have to take more control of your children because real quick, Coach, before we have to go to commercial, one of the things that I've always said is this. If you yourself, if you're not raising your children or your child, if you're not taking responsibility and instilling in them what you want them to learn, what you want them to have, what you want them to know, Mm -hmm. there are people out here who will instill their belief system, their traits, their things in that child. And your child will learn. But what you want your, what you will have to know is that your child learning from you or is he learning from someone else or something else? Oh, that is good. That's just simply good. Um, the child will be raised. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, if, if the child is of your loins, uh, you know, take heed. But, you know, I'm reminded I was watching or listening to something. I don't remember what it was. And um, the thought that come, came to my mind was there's a percentage of people who will never change. And then there's a percentage of people who will change if they are informed and have the right information. And so the Keenan Lake show is about giving people the right information so that they may be empowered to change. And when we come back from the break, we're going to continue to talk about who's raising your children. Are you in control of your household? I like that one right there, Keenan. Are you in control of your household? We'll take a small break and we'll be right back. We interrupt this program to simply say thank you for your listenership here on SIBN Radio. We do not take what you're giving to us for granted. By all means, we invite you to be a part of our family in a deeper way. You can visit our websites, www.sibntelevision.com. You'll see a community page at the top there, and you can join free of charge with your email and share your thoughts, pictures, and so much more right there on the site. And for those of you that would like to listen more regularly to our block programming, you can visit www.sibnradio-bysoletusatv.com. We're now looking for interns for the SIBN networks, and there is no shortage of work that needs to be done. Simply email us your bio or resume to global coverage at selectusatv.info. New programming is always a consideration here at the networks, and we invite you to share your ideas, concepts, or vision as we move forward with a global multimedia platform. We expect great things. We now want to return you to your regularly scheduled program. And again, from our hearts to yours, thank you. Well, we're here with the Keenan Lake Show right here on SIBN Radio. My name is Marcus Sillette, and Mr. Keenan Lake is at the microphone. The phone number, if you want to call in with a comment or a question, 347 539 55 86 or 415-96 radio. Reluctantly, we give that number because one of our producers had to slip out early. But we are so grateful to have Kenan Lake at the microphone again, sharing and encouraging families, particularly those who have children. Kenan, today's topic who's raising your children? Exactly right, coach. You know, um, 
to continue with our discussion, Coach, you know, one of the things that I've been doing, you know, and I want the, the, the listeners to understand that I am a child protective service social worker, so I've been dealing with neglected and abused kids for the past 10 years. Um, I also I also have a men's development program that I run where I work with about 17 young men, ages 12 through 19. Coach, mm-hmm. a lot of the times, and this has been, this has been uh, you know, for a long time now, people think that our kids act out, you know, to get attention, which they do. Um, they think that our kids act out or, or have behavioral issues because they're bad or because they, they're trying to get in trouble or they're seeking the trouble and stuff like that. But the main thing is that, 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 that attention. These kids really want attention, and I've heard from a number of kids, Coach, that they're not receiving any attention at home, that their mothers, their fathers can care less what they do. As long as they're not bothering their, their, their parents or their care providers, then and they're out of their way. And this is not coming from broken homes only, Coach. You know, this is, you know we, we know the statistics where, you know, it's more prevalent for, you know, single parents to be in the African-American home, and, you know, we know the statistics of, of those type of things. But this is coming from all all genres, you know, good homes, homes that are or whatever you want to consider to be a good home, but homes that are considered to have two parents, you know, um, those type of things where I talk to these kids and I listen to them and they say, you know, as long as I'm not, de- you know, in my mom or my dad's way or as long as I'm not in my uncle or grandmother's way, you know, they can really care less what I do. The problem with that is this, Coach. You know, for example, I'm going to give the listeners a, an example here real quick. There's a, a, a cartoon that's going to be coming out, and that fact is actually already out. I've actually viewed part of this cartoon myself because I wanted to see what it was about. The name of this cartoon is called She Zow, S-H-E-Z-O-W. Mm-hmm. The premise behind this cartoon, Coach, is this. A 12-year-old boy uh, receives a, a ring, some, a special ring from his aunt who, who, who passed away. Mm-hmm. Now, when this 12-year-old boy says the words, you go, girl, he transforms into a female superhero. Now, what I mean by that is he, he turns into costume into a female superhero, long hair, pink boots, pink cape, pink you know, outfit, mm-hmm. and he, starts to, he's, he turns into a little girl. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, there's a, in, my, in my opinion, there's a problem with this on a lot of different topics. Primarily, you have a 12-year-old boy who, you know, who's, who, who does this. And when you target 12 year old little boys and younger, that generation, you first of all, you already have, you know, that's the year that's, those are the years when 12 years old, 13 years old, those are the years when our young men or, and women are doing, are going through puberty. They're trying to find themselves and, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're starting to do all this kind of stuff. But that's then right. mm-hmm. as we all know, younger kids watch cartoons, right. primarily that, that five, six, seven, eight, you know, that age right there, they start to watch the cartoons. So they start to see this little boy say the words, you go, girl, and then, you know, turn into a female. So not to get off on a tangent, but these are the things that society has for your children. Now, in some people's view, that may be great. You may want your children to watch that. Um, in my opinion, you know, that would not be something that I would want my child to watch because I, don't, I think it promotes the totally the wrong message, and it does, it does, not, it does a disservice, and, a, and, a, and it does a lot of damage to our youth and young adults. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But as parents, as adults, we have to be aware of these things. And just by telling our children, you know, go in the living room and do what you do or just leaving them to their own demise, I think sets, sets our, our youth up for a very, very, uh, you know, how should I put treacherous. it? Treacherous. A very, <laughs> say that again, Coach? Treacherous, treacherous, dangerous, you know? There you go. Precedent. Yep. This, the this dangerous is the, is the word. A very dangerous, a very dangerous situation i think that once you leave these kids to their own demise it becomes very dangerous and then you said it earlier coach it becomes where other things and other you know children raising children our media our radios our tvs our computers you know our social media is raising our kids where they and, they and the thing about it is this as parents and caretakers the last thing i would say really um in this second in this segment is this too they're going to be exposed to in fact they're going to be overexposed to the media, to the radios, to the televisions, to the computers, they're getting that they're getting that pumped all day, every day. There's computers in the school. There's computers at home. Our cell phones are computers. Mm-hmm. You know, radio is everywhere. Television is everywhere. You know, we have our you know our video games. Our kids are being desensitized all across the board, and the last thing that they need is to be desensitized or being tuned to be tuned out by us as parents and care providers. Well, you know, again. 
you know, you said it well. We as a society have we have fallen into this crevice of do what you feel. And sadly, uh, irregardless of the problems, because we all have a story, and that's one of the things that I try to share with people. We all have a story, but there's a do what you feel. There's a sensational, sensual drive in our culture now. And it's, it's always been there, but it's more prevalent only because we have more access to inlets and outlets. Uh, you know, the spiritual dimension of that would be called gates. We have more gateways. You're exactly right. You know? You're exactly right, Coach. And so when these gateways are unguarded, uh, then by all means, as you said, so eloquently, children have said uh, that they're not getting what they need to grow, to develop, to nurture, to feel, uh, to be able to identify during those times when they're going through that process. And so we're faced with, a di- with several dilemmas. One is recidivism, the continuation of our young people going to jail in and out, in and out until they hit rock bottom and go to prison. Uh, We're faced with school dropouts. We're faced with unwed mothers uh, continuing. It was on a downward spiral just a little bit a few years ago, but I think the economy was doing a lot better during that time as well. We're faced with a drop in in church attendance, which was, was in my view, the last community pillar that we were holding on to for the last 25 years. Perhaps I believe that's slipping. So we, we are in a crevice. Of, of tremendous pressure and the pressure has to go somewhere. And so our children uh, are very bold now. They're very bold in their behavior, very bold in their very, uh, uh, very uh, bold uh, uh, speech of disrespect and dishonor. And that is because, as you said at the top of the show, left unattended, they are finding authority, uh, authoritative ways to exert themselves and, and they're trying to really meet their needs, uh, but because they're children, they can't do that. And uh, so, you know, it begs a different. We're going to go to break, but when we come back, we'll have a closing word. Talk more about uh, the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, which is a great resource. And the resource for this show, for those that may be listening, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back. But it begs a different that we need to step up to the plate, all of us. And we here at the Keenan Lake Show are stepping up to encourage parents offering them relative solutions. Wouldn't you say, Keenan, relative solutions to get relative back in the game? Exactly, Coach. Let's take a small exactly. break. We'll, be we'll right talk back. more about this after the break, Coach. All right, then. Stand by. This is SIBN Radio. And you have just tuned in to the Keenan Lake Show. I'm your host, Keenan Lake. I am a published author, book, My Daddy Taught Me That, a public speaker, and the president of a men's development youth program. The purpose of this show is to create create awareness on topics that are dear to my heart, primarily absent fathers, fathers, male role models in the home, youth and young adults and children, families, and neglect and abuse. I not only want to shine a light on these topics and create awareness on these topics, I want to educate, inform, encourage, and motivate. So please join us on the Keenan Lake Show. For more information about the Keenan Lake Show, give us a call at 415-967-2346. And we thank you for listening to SIBN Radio. All right, we're back here at the desk. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the sounds of the Keenan Lake Show live on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is at the microphone. I'm your host, your co-host, Marcus Sillette, and we have been talking about who's raising your children. Kenan, I am just saddened sometimes by the plight that we have placed our children in in the name of pleasure. There's an old proverb that says, he that loveth pleasure shall come to poverty. And assuredly, Kenan, this is proved out in the statistical data that you and I have talked about and will continue to talk about as we move forward. Children are suffering because we as adults, in my view, do not want to do the hard work. And it's hard, you know, let's let's just give single mothers a, a credit. It's hard when you have to do it by yourself. 
It's hard when you have exactly. to leave work and go to a school of a troubled child. It's hard when you don't have a man to mentor a boy child or a man to give uh, a, a girl child affection so that she won't seek it elsewhere. It's very difficult to place a uh, 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 demand on the children where there are no resources for their training, if you will. Uh, hence why, if I may, uh, as we head toward a close, I would suggest that if you're listening to this show, that you do everything within your power to rebuild a type of community for your child. And the television can't be the parent. <laughs> you know what I mean? The television exactly. can't be the step, step parent or whatever you want to call it. We must get actual people. Uh, and that that have actual values and actual ethics and integrity and credibility within the community where we live uh, or even where we don't live and get the child connected. I would suggest Boy Scouts, and I'm not trying to get myself in trouble, but I, I can't suggest that anymore to a certain degree because there's a big <laughs> debate in that about uh, sexuality and uh, and so forth and so on. But my suggestion is that you get your child connected so that you can have some reinforcement. Kenan, we had so much reinforcement growing up, man. I mean, come on. We did. We did. We did, Coach. And, and listen, to say what you just said, you know, first of all, you were absolutely right. Parents, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not something easy. You just don't have a child and life is grand and, you, you know, you have you know, you know, a bed full of rose petals. And it's very, very hard. And, you're, and, and parents are human beings, you know, care providers were human beings. You know, you're going to have those days when you don't feel like being bothered. You're going to have those times when, you know, you're going to have those weeks and months when it's like, I'm, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed, I'm in over my head. But the thing that I tell you is, is, first of all, seek out what Coach said. You know, seek out services. Find out, find out the services that are in your area to can, that can help assist you, that can help, you know, guide you. Find out, find out those Met those positive, those positive influence in your community as well, because there are people in your in your community who can help you, not just services, but people as well. That's but right. coach, you're absolutely right. We had we had a plethora of of, of services, a plethora of, of of just things that keep us busy, things that keep us out of trouble, things that guide us, things that to help mold and shape us, and and a lot of a lot of things too. You know, we talk about how society has changed. Well, you know, society and the government and and the system has taken a lot of those things away because of funding options, because of uh, the lack thereof funding, you know. So those things that we had back then, Coach, that we took for granted are no longer available today for the, for the youth today. That's true. So it also puts more of a strain on our to raise our children. The one thing that I will say is this, though, folks, you know, to all my listeners out there, what, you, what your children get from you in the home as parents, as care providers, will ultimately be what they become. Mm -hmm. So what you instill, what you provide for them in the home, what you teach them is ultimately what they become. The same thing I tell all my parents from my young men that I deal with in my, in my men's development program. I can talk to you about the best information. I can give him the best, the best tools, the best services. I can talk to him about the best, the very best thing on earth. But once he walks back into that house, once he walks back into his house, it's, his reality is different from what I'm teaching him and I'm talking to him about. What That's he true. learns from you will go as a parent will go more will go further than anybody, any teacher, any any social worker, any service provider can ever teach or instill in your child. That's true, Kenny. We're out of time, man. It's so good to have this conversation again with you. Uh, once again, uh, I think they get the information about how to contact you in the exit. Uh, you stand by, okay? No problem, Coach. Thank you again for listening to the Keenan Lake Show, folks. Thank you for joining us today for the Keenan Lake Show. We know you will be empowered as you consider the content shared by Mr. Keenan Lake, co-host Marcus Select, and our guests. For more information about Mr. Keenan Lake, please visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat and feel free to email us at lake at mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Books can be ordered from Mr. Lake by calling 828-582-2261. Until next time, you've been listening to The Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Radio.